Now, 2009 might have been a year of downturn and recession, but the people at the very top don't seem to have suffered too badly. According to the annual Sunday Times Rich List, the fortunes of the top 1,000 wealthiest people in the UK rose at a record pace of 30%. Top of the ranking is once more the steel magnate Lakshmi Mittal, who's doubled his fortune to more than £22 billion in just one year. That puts the Indian tycoon ahead of Russian oil magnate Roman Abramovich, also owner of Chelsea Football Club. In their place appears the Duke, in, in third place, I should say, appears the Duke of Westminster, the highest placed British born billionaire with assets close to £7 billion. The list also shows Virgin founder and entrepreneur Richard Branson making it back to the top 20 and leading the media category. At just 20 years old, Harry Potter actor Daniel Radcliffe already accumulated £42 million. That ranks him five in the list of youngest millionaires ahead of actresses Keira Knightley and Emma Watson. But if you put this list in the context of the rest of the world, the Mittal family barely makes the top ten, coming in at number nine. The Walton family, which owns Walmart, comes in at the very top, followed by Mexican telecom magnate Carlos Slim Helu. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett and India's Ambani brothers round out the next five. The richest European comes in at number six, the Owen Carl Albrecht, who own German supermarket chain Lidl. Two men who I'm sure will one day make it onto that. <laughs> well, two men. I should say there's one of them joins me now, uh, and that's Mark Barton. Yeah. Uh, we'll have Manus a little later on, but... <laughs> I'm reading the rich list. <laughs> You're reading the rich okay, list. Okay, here's, so here's a question for you before we start. Okay. How much is David and Victoria Beckham worth? I don't know. Enlighten me, Mark. £145 million. Pounds. I mean, that to me is astonishing. Their wealth's gone up by 16% in the last year. By 16%. They're worth 145 million. But we're not but here. Perhaps, but perhaps not as much as Lakshmi Mittal? Lakshmi. 22 billion pounds? He's the, he's the man at the top, Mariam. And as, and as you know, he runs, he owns, he's the big shareholder of ArcelorMittal, which is the world's, of course, largest steel maker. Fascinating to see how his fortunes, of course, have risen relative to the share price. Come and have a look at ArcelorMittal's share price. This is 2009. As you can see, the shares have been pretty much heading. And only only one direction for ArcelorMittal. The shares are up by 89% in 2009. What's fascinating, I think, about the top 10 is the link towards metals and mining. Steel for Mittal. Uh, number two, we've got Roman Abramovich, who of course owns Chelsea. He made his fortune at Sibneft, which was Russia's fifth largest oil producer. Sold that to Gazprom in 2005. But he owns a holding company which owns various stakes in mining companies such as Evraz. So his fortune very closely linked to, to the mining industry, as is the number six, who's Alisha Usmanov. He made his money in steel and mines. And don't forget number 10, Mariam, Anil Agowal. He owns Vedanta. Vedanta, of course, the mining company. Shares last year rose from around five pounds to 25 pounds. So, so this rich list really does correspond or, or translate, if you like, to the performance of commodities. Oh, exactly. A, in commodities and the company's share the price. Year. So how have commodities themselves done? Because I've shown you the companies from which these individuals are making their wealth. And I think a good gauge of commodities is the CRB index. This encapsulates soft commodities, and encapsulates gold, silver, copper, around 20 or so commodities. And as you can see, in 2009, this index, which tracks all these major commodities, rose by 23%. So it was a good year for the whole commodity spectrum. And that's why you're seeing the likes of Abramovich, Mittal, Agarwal and Usmanov all in the top ten of Britain's wealthiest individuals. And that perhaps is, is somewhat surprising given, you know, the events that transpired in 2009, but perhaps much of this being driven by demand coming out of China. Exactly. We're always talking about and it. And that's where demand will continue to come, up, come out of China, India, specifically the emerging markets. So it seems as if in... They came from a low point, of course, the year before. It seems as if if that demand from China continues, which many are forecasting it will with growth in excess of nine possibly ten percent you're gonna see continual demand for these commodities so the likes of Lakshmi Mittal's wealth could I say could get larger and larger and maybe the rich, Beckham the rich as well. get richer Mark? Beckham doesn't 
invest in commodities. Maybe he does invest in commodities. We'll find yeah. out. <laughs> Mark Parsons. 140 million. 145, I thought you said. Is that what I said? You're good. You do listen. <laughs> Mark Parsons, thanks so much.